You guys have been asking me to make a video on the Tian Yuan man for a while now. You see the comments on my channel. So many comments about this individual. I already made a cover of the Usti Shim man, but now people want to see Tian Yuan too. Okay, so so many comments. Everybody wants Tian Yuan. I'll prepare Ulific Asian samples. Tian Yuan or so. Okay, man. Okay. Usti Shim or Tian Yuan. I got Usti Shim already. I got Usti Shim already. It's on my channel. But people want to see Tian Yuan. And I have uh, done Tian Yuan at the time that these comments were said. I've actually, I forgot about it. But I did it at the time. And I never posted the video. Why? Because I thought the sample was kind of sus. So I got the sample from here. Um, it's about Tian Yuan, Tian Yuan Cave, China. And, you know, basically what I did is I actually did both, both uh, methods. So I downloaded the BAM file and then I translated that into 23andMe format. And I did not like this result. So then I was like, okay, this seems kind of sus. What if I download the FASTQ file and then I translate it into BAM and I translate that into 23andMe format? It's the same thing. It was also very sus, very sus result. Why is it sus? Well, here is its predicted phenotype with YSEC. What can we notice with this predicted phenotype? Well, besides the sunglasses and the brown skin, it's a woman. It's, it's predicted phenotype is a woman. And it's supposedly a man. It's supposedly a Tian Yuan man. And I wasn't able to determine its Y DNA or its, or its mitochondrial DNA. So I don't really know what's, what, what am I dealing with here? Am I dealing with the actual Tian Yuan or am I dealing with something else? This is the file. Um, I found it by searching up Tian in my folder. It's a pretty big folder. Yeah, it's, it takes time to search stuff there. And um, it's 15 megabytes. You will find it in the description of this video. You'll download, you can download it, do whatever you want with it. But um, it's surprising to me that it's, it seems to be a, it seems to be a man. I mean, it seems to be a woman. At least that's what I'm getting here. Now let's look at its, let's look at its, hold on. Let's look at its uh, genome, actual genome. So what do we see here? We see that he's got, it's got X chromosome, but no Y. Now, this is not uh, a big deal. This is not a very big deal because sometimes, sometimes the Y chromosome just isn't genotyped or in some formats, they actually call Y chromosome as the X, but all of the, all of the variants are from the Y chromosome. I can't know that. I can't really verify that, but it could be the case here. But what is re what is very suspicious here is let's look at um, let's look at what's homozygous and what's heterozygous. If it's a woman, a woman is going to have some heterozygous calls in on her X chromosome because woman has two X chromosomes, right? So sometimes the calls are different. But for man, a man is always going to have homozyg homozygous calls on the X chromosome. And what do we see here? We see GT, that's a heterozygous call. Uh, let's scroll up a little bit. We're gonna see other such things. Let's scroll up a little bit. Oh, this, there's another one, that's CT. So from time to time here, we see some heterozygosity, which is something you would expect in a woman's DNA file, not in a man's DNA file. So even if I could explain a way that it doesn't have, it doesn't have a Y chromosome because this is just a format, Okay, I can explain that away, but I cannot explain why it's got heterozygous calls for some of these variants. So I'm inclined to think it's a woman. And if it's a woman, that means it cannot be the Tian Yuan man, right? It's something else. That's why this, uh, you can't trust everything you see on European nucleotide archive because they claim it's a, they don't even claim it's a man. I can't even find any information online whether Tian Yuan is a man or a woman. I can't even, I don't even know, guys. Or maybe this is just, I don't know. I don't know why this is the case. I don't know why this is the case. No cell Y, what does that mean? What does no cell Y mean? Does it mean it's without the Y chromosome? What does it mean? I don't know. Yeah, it's just a very confusing sample. I, um, I don't know what to say about it. Let's look at its results. With Eurogenes K36, it's scoring 28.8% South Asian, then Malayan, then Oceanian, then East Asian, then East Central Asian, which is a Mongoloid component, then Siberian, then South Chinese, very uh, East Eurasian components. But it does score 3% West African too. 
2% omotic, 2% pygmy. Those are kind of archaic components that any archaic human is going to score. Uh, it's scoring 2.4% Finoscandian and 1% Basque, which are European components. Once again, those would probably be archaic. You know how you know how ancient samples from Europe or ancient samples that are ancestral to Europeans score all kinds of East Asian and Sub-Saharan African because they simply lack a lot of the modern drift that makes Europeans Europeans. I think this principle applies with East Asia too. I think this person simply lacks a lot of the modern drift that makes East Asians East Asians. And that's why it's scoring some African and European and pygmy and all kinds of crazy things. Let's see what it scores with... um. Let's see what it's going to score with Harappa World. There's Harappa World. I'm not doing the calculate populations because that's going to take way too long and you guys don't have this time. I know how important your time is. Um, it's got this genotype for increased risk of Alzheimer's. Let's see what else. Nothing interesting here. Let's look up DRD2. What does it have for DRD2? It's got this genotype prone to higher nicotine dependence, more impulsive sensation seeking. That's my genotype. That's actually what I score here. It's pretty rare. It's actually super rare for Euro Europeans to score this. But it's most common in like East Asians and various Amerindians and East Asians, East Eurasian people. It's got no no go learner mutation. Once again, same genotype as me. Uh, pretty typical for everybody outside of Europe, but kind of atypical for Europeans as well. And I'm not seeing TAC1. With TAC1, I'm going to make an assumption. It's probably got TAC um, A2A2. That's my assumption, what, it, what it's got for TAC1. I think it's got A2A2, which is the most typical genotype for modern humans. Let's see. Um, is it? What about EDAR? Oh, it doesn't have any. It's not genotyped for EDAR. That's a shame. Well, that's a damn shame. Uh, you can figure that out, by the way, from the file. Like, you don't need, uh, you don't need to. Even if it's not genotyped for the main variation, you can do some imputing and figure out if it's got EDAR or not. And the file is going to be in the description. I'm just not going to do it here. I'm not going to do the imputation process here because that's going to take too long. Um, this is what it's scoring with Harappa World. It's scoring 29% South Indian, followed by Southeast Asian, Northeast Asian, Pop 1. So a lot of uh, affinities towards South Asians and South Indians is what I'm seeing here, and Southeast Asians too. It is scoring 3% Mediterranean. It's also scoring 3% West African and 3% East African, and some San and Pygmy. So it's scoring some kind of archaic components too. Uh, it's not. It, this is, would be a very atypical, very exotic result for any modern person in Asia, is what I'm saying here. Uh, let's. What about Eurogene's K13? About Eurogene's K13. Let's see. Okay, let's take a look at some diseases. It's got a pretty average risk score for coronary heart disease. It's got a pretty high risk score for brain aneurysm. Okay. This is its score with Eurogenes K13, 30% South Asian, around 30% East Asian. So it's mostly split between East Asian and South Asian and Oceanian too. But there is 4% Sub-Saharan, there is 4% Northeast African, there is also 4% West Mediterranean, and 2% North Atlantic, and 1% Baltic. So it's kind of scoring everything. Everything but mostly South Asian and East Asian. What about? Oh, this is a good this is a good calculator for ancient samples. Uh, ancient roots K10. Okay. Um, type two diabetes. Oh, it's got a pretty low score for that. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. MZLP World Ancient Roots K10. It's scoring 43% East Eurasian, 17% Oceanian. So East Eurasian will probably be like modern East Eurasian. So it's already got a lot of modern East Eurasian drift, is what I'm seeing here. It's also got a lot of modern Oceanian drift. Now it's scoring 6.7% out of Africa basal, which would be like a more ancient component. And 6% ancient North Eurasian and 6% ASA. I don't know what ASA is. Enlighten me in the comments if you do know that. Actually, I can check that, but... Wait, can I? No, I can't. I can't because it doesn't have populations. Uh, whatever. 4% Amerindian, 
4% Mesolithic Hunter Gatherer, 3% Early Neolithic Farmer, and 1.9% Archaic Man. So Archaic Man is kind of the Neanderthal, uh, Gorilla, Chimpanzee, Wolf, whatever, whatever non-human, whatever non-human DNA you have, it's gonna score Archaic Man. So it's got 2% Archaic Man. Very interesting stuff. Uh, what about East CK12? This is a calculator specifically for East Asians. Let's run him through this calculator. Blood pressure. Slightly higher blood pressure if Caucasian. Well, it's not Caucasian. Clearly not Caucasian. Bipolar disorder. Pretty average risk score for that. Okay. East CK12. It's scoring 34% Indian, 16% Tibetan, 12% Japanese. 9.56 Cambodian die. Oh, it's scoring 8% African. That's cool. And 3% European. Okay. Um, now, I'm actually going to look into generating, generating G25 for this, for this individual. Let's try that. Okay. Um, I'm going to search for Tian Yuan here. It's gonna take a while. So while it's while it's waiting, let's see something else. Uh, what about I don't know Genomina K14. Let's see this. Forty percent East Asian, thirty-five percent South Asian. Mostly East Asian and South Asian is what I'm seeing here. Then 8% North Eurasian, then 5.3% Middle East early farmers. This is one of those archaic components. Then 5% um, Sub Saharan, once again an archaic component. 2.4% West European hunter gatherer, once again an archaic component. For an East Asian, this would be an archaic component. For a European, this would not be an archaic component. Sub Saharan South, North African HG, those are all very archaic components for East Asians. If you're an East Asian and you score these, it could be for a couple of reasons. It could be because you have admixture from these areas, or it could just be archaic stuff. In this case, this is not due to admixture. Uh, what about, I don't know, something good here. MDLP World K11. This is going to take a while. Uh, this uh, process of raw DNA to simulate a G25, it does take a while. So it's got pretty average risk score for bipolar. Let's see what else. Um, breast carcinoma. Pretty average risk score. Of, oh, bigger breast size. Oh, booba. <laughs> this is not appropriate for YouTube. <laughs> not appropriate content for YouTube. <laughs> okay, so MZLP World K11. It's scoring 40% Southeast Asian. 29% ASI. I think that's Ancestral South Indian. 11% Oceanian. Is this done? Yep, it's done. Okay, I don't want to deal with that anymore. <laughs> I don't want to deal with that stuff anymore. So with G25, it's getting more as a mixture of Jarava, which I've made a video on that. 17.5% Han. Okay, that's Chinese. 6% Ganasan. 4% Kura Arax. Interesting. 2.7 Yoruba. 2.5 uh, Mota. Ganj Darea, Neolithic Farmer. Okay, it's kind of... Um, here we see it's more similar to modern East Asians. Okay, now um, let's put it into target here. What is it most similar? It's most similar to various Onge and Jarava people. Okay, interesting. Did not know that. Well, this is its results. I think this is pretty much all I wanted to cover. You can download this file in 23andMe format from link which is in the description and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Uh, definitely leave your insights. What do you think this sample is? Do you think this is do you think this is Tian Yuan or do you think this is something else? Definitely an interesting sample. I think it is Tian Yuan, but there's just some there's something fruity going on with the file. Definitely something fruity going on with the file. Uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye.